Hi everybody, it's Miss Bianca from Crowder County Park and Historic Gates Mill County Park. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about one of the most fascinating animals that you'll actually find in our parks. Um, and that is going to be the American Beaver. So we have them both at Crowder County Park and Historic Gates Mill County Park. They are going to be mammals, which means that they can regulate their temperature just like we can. Um, and they also have five babies. Um, but they are also rodents, which means they're going to be related to animals like squirrels and mice and moles and that sort of thing. Um, so those are going to be what beavers are. So I just wanted to talk to you about these animals a little bit today because they are very, very fascinating and are able to change their environment to suit their needs, which is really cool because the only other animal that can do this is us. And so beavers are expert engineers. Um, they build things um, to help them live out their lives. So beavers build things like dams and lodges. So dams are going to be consisted of twigs, um, leaves, and mud, and that sort of thing so they can build it up and dam up an area. And so this is going to be places like streams and creeks, and what they're doing is they are damming up an area to create a wetland or a pond. And they need a pond so that it can be deep enough so that they can have their lodge. And so beavers also build lodges out of twigs, um, but they're going to be a little bit different um, and they can vary in size. Some lodges have been um, as, as huge as the one we have at Yates, which you'll get to see a little bit later, and then some are actually quite small, um, like we have at Crowder, and we'll show those to you um, soon. But the cool thing about lodges is that they actually cannot be accessed from the top of the land. They're built on top of the pond and they have an underwater entrance. And so the beavers are actually able to move in and out of their home without being detected by predators, which is very, very neat. Um, and you'll get to see more of what that actually entails um, and further into the video, we're gonna show you some footage. So some beaver dams um, have actually been quite large. Um, they have been recorded as being as tall as 12 feet high to the length of an entire football field. So beavers definitely stay busy, busy beavers, um, and they are very hard workers. If they even hear just a tiny little break in their dam, they are on it. They are on that dam and they are fixing it um, so that it does not break. Uh, beavers um, swim underwater, obviously, um, and they're going to have big webbed feet to help them swim. Okay, so this is um, a rubber mold of what a big webbed foot from a beaver actually looks like, and that's going to help them swim around. And they also have big flat tails that help them steer in the water. Um, they can hold their breath for up to 15 minutes and can swim at about six miles per hour. So that's pretty quick. They can get away pretty quickly um, and stay busy. So another neat thing about beavers is that they actually live in family groups. So beavers do mate for life. You'll have your mom and your dad, um, and usually they're going to have yearlings hanging out around with them that still live with them. And so a yearling is going to be a beaver that's about a year old. Um, and they actually will stay with mom and dad till they're at least two. Um, and what they do is they help build the dams, they help take care of the lodge, they help get food, um, and they also help take care of the kits, which are gonna be the new babies that are born in the season. And so they'll help actually raise their brothers and sisters, which is pretty neat. Um, so you can have beaver families up to six, seven beavers in one lodge, depending on how much, of, much space they have um, and that sort of thing. So pretty neat that they live in these large family units and take care of one another. So now we'll talk a little bit about what these beavers eat, which surprise, surprise, is going to be wood, right? So they love bark, they're gonna love twigs, um, and they also will eat plants, lily pads, that sort of thing, and they are herbivores, which means that they do not consume meat but they are able to actually digest wood, which is an amazing adaptation that they have. Um, another thing, because they are rodents, they have rodent teeth. And so this right here is actually a replica of a beaver skull that you can see. And so if you look at those teeth, they are big, they are large, um, and they're gonna need this if they're gonna be able to 
chew down trees, right? They need to have those big, strong teeth. But the thing about rodent teeth is that they never stop growing. <laughs> so with the rodent teeth, what they have to do is they actually have to keep them filed down. And the, how that works is when they're chewing on a tree um, and that sort of thing, it's gonna help to keep their teeth filed down to a reasonable <laughs> size because they, they don't want their teeth going down to the floor, right? So um, that's gonna be another little adaptation that they have um, that, with their teeth. The beavers are also going to have preferences about the types of trees that they eat. So they do prefer poplar, willow, birch, um, and those sorts of trees. Um, but in the winter time, especially when things start to get a little bit sparse, they're going to go for, you'll see them going for trees like pine trees. Um, but they are expert planners as well, which is pretty neat. So one thing they'll do before the winter comes is they'll go and start collecting lots and lots of twigs. And what they're doing is, is they're actually gonna have an underwater storage area um, near their lodge that's gonna, they're gonna keep all that food for the winter. And so when the winter time comes, they're not having to go out in the cold um, and get food. They can simply just get it from their refrigerator, right? So they're gonna actually store food in their little um, area, their winter storage, and that's how they, they survive the winter. So one thing I wanted to share with you guys as well is going to be something we call a beaver chew. You've probably seen lots of them around the pond um, and it's really neat to look at because you get to see some of those special adaptations from these animals. And so this here is going to be a beaver chew. You can see all the bark has been, um, it's been taken off of it. That's probably because that's what he was snacking on. But the cool thing about beaver chews is it actually allows you to see where the beaver's teeth has imprinted onto the wood. And so if you take a look at that, it's pretty cool to see exactly um, how they are keeping those teeth uh, uh, filed down. So. so I do want to talk to you guys a little bit more in detail about the beaver's tail. So we did talk about how the, the beaver's tail does help it steer in the water, keep it balanced, kind of like the rudder of a ship. But beavers are also going to use their tails to help uh, get predators away from them in a very funny um, way, actually. So what they do, if they see a predator approaching them, what they're gonna do is take that big tail and they're gonna smack it really loud against the water and it's gonna make a loud noise. And that noise is actually going to deter predators away from them. It's going to shock the predator and get them to scurry away. So that's another cool adaptation that those beavers are gonna have with their tail. Another thing that these beavers have is going to be something called castor oil that they produce in oil glands. And this is an oil that they can actually put on their fur to help waterproof them. So they actually have special little nails um, on their back paws that they're gonna use to groom themselves. And they groom themselves quite a lot. And the reason they're doing this is that they're actually taking that oil and putting it on those nails and they're actually going to comb through their fur. And this is gonna make their fur water resistant, which is gonna help them when they're in the water and they're gonna get wet and that sort of thing. Um, so it's gonna help protect them um, from getting too cold and all sorts of things like that. So a little bit about the history of beavers. So by the late 1800s, beavers were actually almost entirely extinct. Um, and that is because in the 1800s, um, it became very popular to make hats out of beaver fur. Um, and it was very popular because the, their fur is waterproof, um, which means that it lasted a long time. Um, but it would take about nine beaver pelts to make one hat. So the beaver population declined significantly to the point that they were almost extinct. Um, and in North Carolina, by the late 1800s, we didn't have any beaver here anymore. Um, but then in the 1930s, we um, received 29 beavers from Pennsylvania that we reintroduced into the area. Um, and they recovered. And now we have beaver in all 100 counties in North Carolina. Um, and similar things were done um, throughout North America. And so now we have 15 million beavers um, in North America. So their numbers recovered significantly. Um, and then we also, because of this, they create habitat for lots of other animals like raccoons, um, ducks, all kinds of birds, deer, all the animals that you would see around our, our ponds. 
Um, and so what happened was is that animals like wood ducks, whose numbers had also been declining, um, they started to, their numbers went up because of the reintroduction of beavers and the reintroduction of wetlands. Um, wetlands actually in 50 years, the percentage of wetlands that we had in North America doubled after the reintroduction um, of beaver. And so they're very, very important for the habitat, for these other animals. They help improve water quality and prevent erosion. So it was very, very important and it's wonderful that we have so many now um, to help us with all those things. All right, everybody. So now what we're going to do is learn all about beaver adaptations and all the things that they have to utilize to survive in the wild. Um, so we're going to do a part of our beaver program, but I'm going to do it here in my home. Usually we'll have a human assistant to help us with our build a beaver, but today we are going to have a special guest, a Basset Beagle named Bubba. So please enjoy is Mr. Bubba. Bubba is a Basset Beagle, but today he's going to turn into a beaver. So he has his first layer of fur already, don't you buddy? Yeah. And then he's got his little second sweater on um, for his second layer of fur that beavers are going to have to help them keep warm. And it's going to be a little bit thicker. All right. And then they have Bubba's favorite part, <laughs> the blubber layer. Okay. Come here, Bubba. Come here. He's got his blubber layer on to keep him nice and warm for winter. And then he's going to need something to protect him from the rain, right? And the water. So he's going to be waterproof now, right? He's going to use his castor oil on his fur to help keep him dry. All right. Then he's going to have these to help with his ears, okay? Beavers have little ear flaps, so when they're under the water, they don't get water in their ears. So Bubba is gonna protect, well, they're rather big ears, so it's a little hard. And then he's gonna have webbed feet, right? Bubba doesn't wanna put on webbed feet, but he would have, yes, yes, he would have. And then you need your beaver teeth, right? So Bubba's got his beaver teeth. Can you show him, Bubba? Bubba, uh, show, show him the beaver teeth. He doesn't want teeth either. And then beavers are also going to have nictating membranes. And what these do is they per, it's like a third um, or a second eyelid that's translucent um, and it's gonna cover their eyes and protect them from water so they can swim underwater with their uh, with their eyes open. Come here, Bubba. 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 Come here. Come here. We gotta put on your, your nictating membranes. And now he has his nictating membrane so he can swim underwater. All right. He's also going to have great eyesight, right? Because beavers are nocturnal. And so they have the ability to see really well at night. And so we have our flashlight here to represent that. Yeah. He lost his nictating membranes though. So there we go. Bubba. So now we have built our beaver, right? We built our beaver. Good boy. He's so good. He did such a good job. You're gonna be a star now, Bubba. Yeah. Yeah, I know. He's also a talker. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> now you're gonna get to see some footage from our actual park. So we have Jack Singley, park technician um, over at Historic Yates Mill County Park who's gonna show you some of the footage from the lodge there. And then we have Patrick Lynch, park technician over at Crowder County Park, who's gonna show you the lodge from Crowder. Hi folks, this is a, a video for Historic Yates Mill County Park. My name's Jack, and we are talking about beaver lodges today. This is the beaver lodge that's active right now uh, at the end of the creek uh, entrance to Yates Mill Pond. The, uh, one of the ways that we know it's active is that there is a scent mound somewhere near this lodge. It could be the scent mound right on top of the lodge. Um, how do I know it's a scent mound? Well, I can smell a strong smell of beaver right here. What does a beaver smell like? Well, it smells strongly of urine. So that lets other animals know, hey, this is my beaver area. Also, if you look, there's no 
entrance on the top of this shelter, all the entrances are either hidden underground by a, one of these entryways into the, the wetland or under the water. So that allows the beavers to be able to be hiding from predators. A fox could figure out how to get to their uh, shelter and dig through the top, but it would have to go through a lot of effort to do that. So that is the new entry or the new shelter for Yates Mill beavers. Here is one of the beaver lodges at Crowder County Park. It's what's known as a bank lodge, wherein the beaver swims from the water into a uh, tunnel he's made into the bank which opens up into a dry area inside this lodge. They can usually they can usually be a lot bigger than this, uh, but here at the park we have a kind of a small area, so he does the best he can. It looks like someone just took a big pile of sticks and left them here on the bank. You can see on all the ends of them where he has gotten dizzy. Here is a back door entrance to that same beaver lodge. A lot of times they'll use these to escape from predators and to get in a different way if they're being followed or chased. Might be hard to tell, but this goes, it's a cut in the bank that the beavers dug and it goes all the way into the earth itself. Another angle of the beaver lodge. And here we can actually see his entrance. Might be hard to see on the video, but it goes back into there. And while the beaver will have to be wet to enter, his inside part of the lodge is dry. All right, you guys, so that was a little bit about beavers. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, just let us know, and we hope to see you soon.